Hello everyone, I'm Michelle. Welcome to another video. Today I'm going to show you how I make this, the process of making this tribal style uh, necklace that I made from the products from Bargain Bee Box. Okay, and one side is a large hole porcelain beads. On the other side is multi-strand. Okay. And to do the in it, we've got a big pendant here. And to do this, I could not find anything with a loop on the back like this. That's your best if you want it to kind of hug up tight to the beads. That's your best bet. But I'm going to use this instead. So instead of just taking all the strands through this loop on the back, I'll be taking all the strands through this loop here. It's no big deal, I guess, but. I, just, I like these pendants for this style necklace. Alright, and the hardest part of this whole tutorial is going to be telling you what I'm going to be using because, you know, this is going to be basically random stringing. So you're going to need some, you know, Heshi beads probably seed beads, um, four millimeter beads, uh, some, a few larger beads here, that's what I'm going to use these for, these bone beads, um, and just smaller, but just, you know, random, I've got some six, eight millimeter, I think is what these are, beads, and it, believe it or not, you know, you could str string them however you want, randomly, and when they all lay together, you know, they just look gorgeous. Alright, so you're going to need, I'm using, I cut one piece of this chain that I got the other day from Hobby Lobby. I cut it in half. Alright, you know, separated it. And that's going to be my chain. So you're going to need some chain for right here on the ends. Okay. And then you're going to need some, this is 0.05 millimeter Eslon. Ceylon, you can probably use um, fine or micro or Ceylon or um, I don't know about Chinese knotting cord if they make it really small. I'm not sure. Okay, so you're going to need your cord. And as you can see here, I just have right here is. the large hole porcelain beads that I'm going to be using for the right for one side okay and on the other side it's just going to be random six strands of random beading but I this beautiful Z bead here I don't have any barrel beads like that so I'm going to try to do put a strand through each one of these I don't know how many it's going to take. Maybe three. Two beads. And then. Or maybe all of them. I'm not sure. And then knot it. To try to, try to replicate that. But if you have a Z bead. Or any other longer tube style bead. Use that. That'll be fine. And. Um, here I've got some six millimeter. Um bicones, the check bicones. I got some four millimeter um, drugs, some six, five millimeter actually. I'm going to put a little splash of black through it. You can see black. I'm using black cord. And there's black, no black. That's how I knew this would look good knotted because it's got those black beads in between. Kind of looks like knots. All right. And you're going to need some, I chose these seed beads, 6 O's and 8 O's, to go on your, the side with the multi-strands. Alright, so just get a bunch of beads, smaller, up to 6 millimeter, maybe 8 if you want a few larger, interspersed. And, oh, look at these, um, these little ladybug beads, I'm finally using them. After having them and saving them for just a perf perfect project from um, 
I believe it was the dollar bead box. Little ladybugs. So I'm going to use those. And then I've got some cat's eye green I want to bring in because of the green. Uh, here on the one strand. So as I go, I'm, I've got some, because my chain has got an antique copper, I'm going to use some metal beads with antique copper. All right, and then I've got these pinch beads that's copper too. So a little bit of metal, bring a little bit of metallic through it. All right, and then I had to bring in, of course, some harvest yellow to match that yellow or gold. All right, so get all your materials together. Come back and we'll get started. All right, now cut your cord in six pieces of, I used a wingspan from fingertip. We hold your arms out straight to your sides. And from, t from one hand to the other is the length I used. Now I know that's an awful lot of cord for such a small choker style necklace, but and you can make this as long as you want to. But we're going to be tying a lot of knots. I just ruined my tape. Hold on. So I'm going to tape one end so they don't fall apart. Here, I'm just going to lay it on the tape. And at varying lengths, I find it easier to go through beads. Uh, big large hole beads when the they're not all one length all right so we got that end taped now the next end Make sure they're, you know, let's see. I'm just going to cut them like at an angle. Varying lengths. There we go. All right. Now, let's, I'm going to put on the pendant. I'm going to put all these in there. I mean, you know, I could maybe have to do this one at a time. I'm not sure. But let's see how many I get in. Where's that coming from? I think maybe one's not in there or something. Yeah, it was just stuck with my camera. All right. Now we want to find the center. So of course we'll hold all the ends up, both ends. And get to work from the end that's got the tape to make sure everything's straight on that side, and then work your way down to the other side. Center. Sorry, this is so long I can't really do it on camera. I'm trying to get the corral these cords together. Make sure everything's straight and lined up. 
and find your center, okay? I've got my center here. And I'm going to go ahead and tie a knot on the left hand side of that heart. Wait a minute. I'm trying to think. Do I want. I think I want to put a large hole bead there. Let's see. So now I'm going to move to the right, okay? Because I have tape on that side. Try to keep it right where it's at. So I'm going to go through this large hole bead. It's good metal color. I feel like I pulled. Sometimes, you know, you might in the beginning have to keep trying to find your center until we get a knot established. I want you to put your finger there. That's where the knot's going to be. You're going to pull into that, okay? Wrap the cord around your fingers. Right there where your thumb is, it's right where you want that knot to be. Just work that knot down. Make sure all your cords are you're pulling them at There's one that's a little looser, if I can find it. Set to pull your cords one at a time. There, that's the one I wanted. Okay. So there's the right side. Now we just want to keep adding our large hole beads up the right. Come on. I think I have some too short here. Let me pull some up. Bring them down to the knot. Now, like I said, let me explain. When I put, if you have got and want to do exactly what I did here, I knotted with that loop on the back, I knotted on either side, both sides, 
and then I just started adding my beads okay here because it's made like it is I'm adding I'm going through the loop and adding a bead before I knot okay but here I knotted before I added you could do either all right and now we want to tie and it we want it to be tight to the bead so and you also might want to use your all beading all for this to slide the knot down sometimes it's hard to keep the strands together normally do what do I hold on to no well right here I normally see how I'm holding this this way and pulling and that's all the, the all really does too is slides that knot down I'm wondering if I should go ahead just to make this more stable to work with and do my left side. I think I will. I think I'm going to take this tape off. I'll be right back. Now I've went ahead and put my bead on. I don't want to push real hard because it'll make it go like that. I just want it to be nice and lay nice there. And I'm going to pinch it where I want the knot. I want to bring my wrap it around my fingers, bring my strands through it one time, hopefully. I'm going to pinch those strands, bring them through. Now, I'm going to make sure it's laying where I want it. And you could use your awl. And that kind of brings them down, you know, toward the bead. And then push that knot up against that bead. And then, of course, we'll pull again each.
strand individually and then at once. Now the left side's kind of secured for now. And we'll continue working on the right by just adding our bead or large hole, you know, whatever bead you're using. And then knotting all your cords. The stubborn one don't want to go in. There you go, and there's it's on. Now we want to. Bring our cords through. There's, you know, you have to just keep playing with it. Make sure, because I see a cord that's not. There we go. There's two, and then I've kind of laid my beads out. In order that I want them here. So I'll cut through. Tie my knot. Place my all and make an opening here, right here. And then I kind of pull, make sure everything's each strand is equally tight. around the all and then I'll do it one at a time again there pull down to the bead all right so I measured, um, let's see, where's the other necklace? I measured from not after the last bead, 
after from not to you know not over here to the beginning there's five and a half inches of beads all right so keep that in mind as you're stringing you know uh, let's see my macrame board it's I like it. it's got measurements so we would measure from right here you know at the top of the pendant and lay it on the five and a half mark and come up and that's how much beads we want to put on right five and a half inches and then you know of course there's uh, we connect to the chain and all that so I want you to keep putting your beads on the right side until you have about five and a half inches of beads from the top of the pendant here to the last knot okay come back and we'll do the next step okay now um, now that you have your five and a half inches on one side um, I'm going I went ahead and put on you know I did the knot put the I consider this kind of part of the pendant I just had to do that to because of the loop to hold it secure and you know so um, I knotted after that bead normally like I said if the loop was on the back like this I would have see I knotted out here instead of right here it's on the back I wouldn't have used these beads I would have just brought all my strands through and knotted on each side and then put my Z bead and knotted again and that's on the left side well it's on the right side when you're wearing it but when you're looking at it it's on the left when you're making it all right so instead of that Z bead I'm using what I have okay some bone beads and Heshi beads and now I'm going to tie a knot and then we'll start our six strand our adventure of uh, putting the strands on the multi strand part all right and this bead counts in your six five and a half inches all right so you measure from the knot to the knot up above because we're going to bring all them strands through one bead and then knot all right um, I'm going to be bringing all my strands through one of these porcelain beads after I get done stringing all you know six strands and like I said uh, this counts for your five and a half inches actually all this does alright so I'm going to tie a knot and then I'll come back and string with you for a little bit okay for each strands you know I want to start off and it's best to start off see here with these smaller a couple smaller seed beads all right so I'm gonna pick up a couple of these 80 seed beads before I get started and I really personally would like to have just a strand of Oh no, where's the, 
and pull a few off. The strand of these hashy beads. I don't know if I'm going to be able to, instead of stranding up, stringing them one at a time, I'd like to just go up through. As many as I can get. How many that is? Where's my thread? Let me clip my thread at a diagonal. Get that bushy end off. Let's see if that helps. Okay, I'm going to continue to string the strand um, until I get as many beads as I need. Like I said, it's got to be five and a half inches from here. And then I'll start, and I'll come back and start my next strand. Alright, so there I ended it with a seed bead. And there's my five and a half inches. I'm just going to tape that off so my beads don't slide off. All right. And then I'll pick a strand and start the next row. Now I think I've decided to put some copper seed beads. Um, to bring in that, that copper of the chain instead of the white. Alright, make sure those seed beads go down, you know, to the knot. Alright, and then let's see what what do I want? The strand. I don't know that I like this here. This black tube part, but there's not a whole lot I can do about it now. So I want to um, bring in some of this gunmetal to match the top beads or the beads by the pendant. So I'll put that gunmetal and a copper seed bead. Are you seeing what I'm doing? And um, let's see, what else do I want to use in this strand or in this row? Um, Do 
Do I want to use some of these ladybugs in this row? I hope our cord will go through. Yes. And this is what I exactly what I did um, on the first necklace. It's just string these rows individually. Um, do I want anything to break that up? Maybe a uh, bring some green in. I don't know what's going on with this one. It's not one to go through the hole. Let's see. Sometimes there's just a little snag that it gets caught on. So, there's the hole. So I take my reamer and just clear it out a little bit. It may not work. I don't know. Yep. Copper. And then I'll do a good metal. Our polish bead, copper seed bead, and ladybug. have to trim the end of this. It's getting frayed a little bit. And then I'm just going to do this row in that pattern. Third row, I'm going to start off with a couple copper seed beads. And maybe a copper and a blue. I think this row is going to be blue and gold. With, um, not sure, maybe a splash of something else. Alright, so. Start putting on some of these blue bone beads. In no particular order.
Let's see, huh? is like a rondel sort of more than a heishi I'll put a couple of the heishi beads the blue heishi beads well, let's see if I can get it through there alright and then do gold. Do blue. And a gold. One more gold, I think, and then I'll do a few blues. And then I'll do a blue rondelle, a blue, you know, bead, round bead. Just stringing on beads. And I think I'll do a round in a tube. So let's see. And then I'll do a hishi, a blue hishi, and a yellow hishi, or gold. Should I put something there to break that up? Mm -hmm. I don't know. I'm going to simmer on this for a minute. I'll be back. All right. Three rows down. Here's what I did. I put some blue. I, you know, added a little yellow to give it a little pop of the gold. Um, and then I wanted to something to use something to break that up. So I just put one of these barrel beads on. Added a little 
tan into the mix and ended with a seed bead and taped it off. Now I have to start another row and this row I'm going to need some bigger beads. All right, I got one more row finished. I got two more to go. And what I did is I put on two seed beads and then some of these cat's eye glass, one of the bicones, the check glass bicones. You know, the not the shiny crystal, you know, sparkly one, but the more toned down one. And then a bone bead that I got and like a reddish maroon and then another bicone two cat's eye some turquoise bone beads to like break it up add a little more blue in and then repeat and then on the end here I put a couple of the blue bone beads and then two copper seed beads now, I know, you know, you're probably thinking, ugh, I don't know about these, but once they're all finished and they're all, you know, going to be, there's going to be two more, and they're all going to be knotted and they kind of all lay together, you know, it's just the overall effect is going to come through. They'll look, they'll look good. The only part that I'm not liking is this right here, but I'm just going to have to deal with it. All right, so <clears throat> I'm going to start my next strand, and I'm going to put on a couple copper seed beads and I'm not sure what this strand's gonna be come on seed bead I'm just kinda looking over and seeing what all I've got here What colors do I need more of? You know, I picked up the black AB instead of the black gunmetal, but this definitely needs some gunmetal in it to bring this pendant together. So maybe, I don't know, gunmetal, red and gold. All right, I'm going to think about it and try some things out and see how it goes. I'll be back. All right, let me show you what this strand, what I did with this, with this strand here. Started out with, of course, some small seed beads. Added a six millimeter gunmetal and, I don't know, six or seven Hishi beads. Another fire polish uh, five millimeter fire polish, three metal, uh, three um, of these antique copper, and then just started the pattern over and fire polish, heishi, and fire polish, and three fire polish, heishi, fire polish, and then one, two, th and the two seed beads at the end, and put them in my little pile. And see that kind of brings this up. Uh, let me tell you. Uh, hopefully you haven't made this necklace yet. If you do not have the right. You know it's a fat tube here. On this other necklace. And I didn't have the right bead. And I wanted to go ahead and get this out. Because people want to give it for gifts for Christmas. See how fat, much fatter that is. And it just 
really works on this necklace but on this necklace it doesn't work it really doesn't so what I would do in that case if I didn't have the right bead I'd just start all six of my strands right down here after this knot just start all my strands it's really it's really a bummer that I didn't do that but um, yeah it's really a bummer I didn't do that but anyway it'll work um, for tutorial purposes this is this necklace is just um, because I got requests and I wanted to help help you out so I don't know I'm thinking this strand I might want I don't know is that too big is that too big to you know have one of those hearts in the mix because I'm gonna have one up here yeah I'm not gonna do that I'm not gonna do that so what I'm gonna do is of course I'm gonna start off with my sit bits small beads whatever they are and put a couple of seed beads eight o's is what I'm using and then I think I want this strand to be all small beads like small so what I'm gonna do is uh, I'm gonna look around and try to find some cream colored rondelles or something to run up through here to finish this off and I'll be right back I'm going to see if I have I want a small strand of beads I want to see if I have some like cream colored small beads to run up through here with all these colored beads oh what was I thinking with that black all right all right, what I did here on this last strand, I just said I was going to, I wanted to use small beads, so I used my two seed beads at the bottom, and then my little one and a half by two, I believe, millimeter crystal rondelles, and in between those is the metal copper seed beads, and when I lay them over on top of this, it just gives that, you know, a little pop, I think, that it needed of uh, cream since we've got one bead here that's like a cream color all right so we finished all our strands see this one's already not taped I mean I don't want to lose any beads and have to restring this tape kind of got caught on each other so I'm going to pull the tape off each of the strands it's really easy to take off you just pull it off all right and then I gather all the strands up making sure they're about the same length this one here might need another seed bead or two. Okay, so we're going to have to let 
Let me see. Did I tie a knot? I think I did before I... No. I'm going to go up through my bead with all my strands and then tie a knot. Through my... Whichever one I want to use. The top here. Okay, make sure... Okay, I went up through my bead. Okay, I stuck all my strands up through the bead. Then I'm going to use here and make sure you pull each individual strand to make sure that they are tight but not real tight you know you want them to be comfortable all right and then you're going to tie your knot Um, let me think. We got to add our piece of chain. So, depending on which way we want to use it, I think I want the red facing down this way. Uh, so we bring it over, bring it through the chain. Now what we could either do here, we could actually silk wrap this together and then see how much we had we had a lot of string left over but see these are going to probably be dangles so what I did with the other necklace was I just tied like a knot right here But I could, we could uh, macrame over that. Um, which is what I think I might do. I think it would be nicer. It would look nicer if it was macrame. Just a little tiny bit of macrame, and then these here, however long you want these to be dangles you know, fringe. You can do that. Just gonna get a little bit of cord. Not a whole lot. We don't need much macrame. And I'm gonna keep it black. And it's gonna be short, really short. Um, it's not gonna be a whole long macrame piece. We just wanna hold these strands. We just wanna pull everything, you know, together. Make sure, like I said, all your strands are pulled up where you want them. And then I'm just going to slip this underneath. It's going to, it's, it's kind of tricky to macrame like this in a bind, sort of. So instead of just starting right away with my macrame knots, I'm going to. Just tie a knot. Just tie a like a half hitch knot. Let's see, I don't want it real long. I just Alright, so then I'm just going to do a Q 
queue, which you put your loop and over the with the left piece of um, cord over the piece and then you bring your right cord over the left piece up and under everything here and up through that loop. I've got plenty of videos on macrame. And then I'm going to do the other side, the P, bring the loop around over the piece, bring the left leg over the right leg, and then you go under Where's the cord? and up through this loop here. It doesn't have to be, look pretty, but it just, you know, you got to get it. I'm talking about the process, you know, it looks kind of messy, but it's not. I know what, where the thread's going to end up. Okay, so there's one full half inch knot, a P and a Q. All right, I think I'm going to do one more, which is two half hitches to make a full macrame knot. Did I say full half hitch? I meant that's a full macrame, a P and a Q. Through the loop. Now this has definitely got to be glued. So get out your GS Hypo Cement. Enough goes over this and under and up through the loop. All right, now I've got that on. Now we have the glue here on the sides and here on the sides. Turn it over and same on the back. GS Hypo Cement's perfect for that. Just got that needle and it gets small spots. takes a second for it to start coming out, but once it does, it usually comes out when you're not wanting it to and you're trying to get that cap back on. But it, I love it. It's great glue. Glue that really well so it doesn't come out. And then turn it on the back. Do the same. kind of soaks up in your cord and but it, it holds it don't it won't come apart. I should have told you in the beginning there will be a materials list of everything I used after this completed, you know, when I put the video up. Because it's a necklace like this, it's it's everybody's going to be different and it you just have to um, have a bunch of beads to work with and so afterwards then I can put what I used up um, as a materials list but at the beginning it's darn near impossible because as you go you know, you're switching beads, you're adding beads, you're taking away beads. So, okay. Now, make sure to let 
that glue dry before you cut those ends. All right. And so if you want fringe here, um, where's that necklace? Here it is. I'll show you my fringe. And it's really it makes it nice because, you know, that's the ends of the cord. So you know they're not coming out of that knot. So that's the fringe, you know, short little fringe that I made. Uh, we got plenty of cord left to match, actually, to do some fringe. But let's go ahead and get the other side of the necklace completed before we do that. All right. Just as I thought to get my knot I need to do the same thing I did on the first necklace that I made I need to what I did was I took some metal beads and maybe I'll use some of these cream colored and what I did is I took each strand. Well, let me show you what I did. It's going to be pretty much, see, I just took each strand and put a metal bead on. And then that gave me the space I needed to be at the same length. And then I went up around. And, and on this side, I did macrame. So we'll be doing macrame to close that off again. Alright, so on each one, you know, you can put a little rondelle, just something, just, you know, maybe a different amount, I don't know, beads, whatever you want, actually, we just need to take up a little space. Before we add the chain it takes a while to get these little little one and a half millimeter on so I'll be right back after I get this part done all right I'm gonna go through my I got all my cords after I I randomly put on some see that just some small metal beads with um, some little two by three rondelles or one by two I'm not sure they might be two by three and um, just to take up some space see they're just all different no no rhyme or reason and we want to and then we're going to take our chain and we're going to put all of our cords through it. We're going to do the same thing on this side we did on the last side, the other side. And I'm going to bring it down. Make sure all your cords are pulled up tight. There's one here that's a little looser. Let me find it. There it is. The very last one, of course. And we're going to bring these down like this. And then I'm going to find oops. Take a piece of cord, it doesn't have to be very long. And I'm gonna go underneath. I'm 
gonna tie an overhand knot. Ugh. Or half hitch, you know. Just to corral all these cords. I'm going to try to slide this up as close as I can to that jean, this starting point here. Then I'm just going to start doing my macrame. Gotta go underneath every thing. There we go, and up through the loop. And then the cue. Bring the cord over. You know, you got a loop here. You gotta bring the next cord over that cord, over the love cord underneath your strands and up through this loop here you made. Make sure it slides down. There we go. I might have got my cord a little short but it's okay as long as I can bring the one over the next and it stays underneath and up through. Okay, then we'll bring out the glue. We're going to let that dry, those two, before we cut those off. And on this side, I didn't have any fringe. Um, after that dries, you can just clip those, all those cords off. And don't throw this cord away. You might need some short cords for something. Just put them in a baggie, jewelry baggie or something, can Tupperware container or something like that. All right. <clears throat> So now we've got all these cords in our way, but what we want to do is we just want to add the clasp. And 
pan I'm using. A toggle clasp here. And so when you think about what side is this going to be on, we'll put the, this over here. This one over here, but before we do that, we need some jump rings. And I like the thicker gauge jump ring if you know they go through well. Let's see which one works better. The pliers are buried back here in beads. Let's see. Since that's so wide, it'll probably be this one. The larger, the nine millimeter, I think it is. Uh, and and if this is too long, you can always take off lengths of your chain. These are pliers here are nice when you're working with small delicate things but not for these heavy gauge jump rings, these ones. These are on. Like fine tip. And then we'll take the other side and put the other side on. And I think this is the right toggle for this clasp. Yeah, that lays it nice. All right. So now, um, let me show you the fringe. If you want to make fringe, okay. And so you just do it like you did when you strung the beads here. You just take one at a time and I recommend smaller beads for the fringe, you know, just small. I'm going to do some blue. Oops, it came off. just keep for this one I'll just put more blue just you know you don't need that many beads because the fringe let's see it hangs down so like these beads it'll hang, you know however long you want it you know they'll hang down I don't think I yeah see I didn't completely I just filled the ends with beads. So I think that's enough. And then when you're done, what you do is you figure out how long you want it, you put your thumb there, and then you tie your knot.
and then what I do is after I cut this I just take a um, candle lighter or something lighter and then just burn the end and there's no way that's coming off I might have made that a little bit too long I might shorten that up all right so here's our necklace and when everything's dry and finished I'll put it on the bust and show you what it looks like okay this one's a little longer I might need to take a link or two off we'll see all right I clean all the mess up on my table all, all the beads that's really a job um, but here's her necklace and um, like I said the process was exactly the same the necklace does not look the same but I explained to you how if you have that loop on the back of your pendant you'll come through and knot put a knot on each side of that loop and uh, if you have that nice chunky Z bead use it if not I would just come off that knot and start my strands I just come off this knot and start my strands if you don't have the speed because that's the one thing that I do not like about this necklace is right here right here it's not chunky enough which is a real bummer but live and learn live and learn okay and then we come up and you know just string whatever bead you want on your six cords we came up and we came through this big large old porcelain bead and we made it around our chain back down and macrame those two together and this is the dangles we created uh, that's that's the thread that we brought around the chain back down and macrame over top so that's not coming loose don't forget to glue your macrame also um, if you don't this necklace is a bit longer because the chain if you don't want it uh, let's see how long is it here's my macrame board let's measure right let's see it is what well, one side is it's about 20 inches so you know if you want to take a if you don't like I said you could take a few of these off I want to see what it looks like on I put it on and it lays pretty nice now this one here is more of a tribal choker and it is it is about a 17 inch necklace you know but this one's still my favorite is this one here because this this really ruined ruined it I think you know but at least I got the tutorial done you all can make your your uh, gifts for your families um, before Christmas and if you have any questions don't hesitate to ask on my uh, probably best place would be on my uh, Facebook group artistic jewelry and beats it's open group and I'd love to see you guys there um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else that I did not explain. Um, I will put a picture of this on the bust and include it at the end of this video so you can see what it looks like on. Um, thanks for watching everybody and I'll see you in the next video.